OMG guys, it's a build day today. Ah! I'm really excited today because I get to build my dream PC. I'm not just talking about a PC that, uh, you know, it's a good PC. I'm talking about the one that's just like, ooh, baby, baby. It's gonna have all the bells and whistles to it. And uh, as you can see here by what we have, um, there's quite a lot of whistling going on. Um, I'm gonna be loading this up with two RTX 3090s, which were almost nearly impossible to find. I paid a premium for these two, and I don't even wanna say how much I paid for them, but a ridiculous amount of money for them. We got our NV link right here, which is great. And uh, then I'm also gonna be stocking it with uh, 256, yes, 256 gigabytes of RAM uh, at 3200 megahertz, which is really phenomenal uh, and should really help with uh, a lot of the rendering that I'm doing inside of DaVinci Resolve, as well as the 3D Studio Max and After Effects. It's all RAM hungry programming, so I uh, really wanna make sure we have a lot of RAM. Um, and I'm also gonna be using a variety of uh, PCIe 4.0 um, NVMe SSDs. I'm not gonna have any uh, regular hard drives or even SSD hard drives in there. It's all gonna be NVMe, uh, and I'm gonna have 12 terabytes of that. I'm gonna have uh, eight terabytes in a uh, standalone PCIe 4 um, RAID card, and then I'm also gonna be putting in um, uh, at least two um, of the uh, two terabyte uh, 4.0. So really excited for that. And of course we can't forget about what's gonna be pushing all of this and that's the new AMD Threadripper Pro. This is the uh, 3975, uh, the 32 core version. Um, I was gonna go with the 128, but just given the price and how um, much little performance there really is an increase in that, um, it didn't really make any sense to do that. And um, while the, uh, the original version of this, the 3970, is slightly faster in the gigahertz range, um, I think this is gonna be the perfect um, sweet spot and middle ground for what I wanna do. Um, my current rig only has 18 cores um, at 4.2 gigahertz, so it's pretty much on par with that. So if I can get this to um, 32 cores, um, I know that there's uh, been talk that this doesn't actually do all cores at 4.2 gigahertz. So uh, I'm gonna see what I can do to uh, either A, remedy that or see how fast this can actually get. But really excited to use this. I haven't used AMD since 2007. Uh, back when the original Phenom 2s came out. And um, it was an exciting time back then, and I, you know, I've been an Intel guy ever since. Um, but I really um, have really loved what AMD's been doing with their uh, uh, CPU technology. Uh, the fact that this is seven nanometers and um, can maintain a high um, uh, thread count or, or a high uh, gigahertz thread count is, is pretty impressive. Um, and I, so I really wanna see how this works inside of DaVinci Resolve, um, as well as Adobe and whatnot. Um, I'm not really too hopeful for Adobe because their programming and their coding is just terrible, <laughs> just to say the least, because it doesn't really take advantage of any of the hardware that you have in your computer, especially not two GPUs. So um, it'll be interesting to see how this works in Adobe, but really the main ultimate goal is to see how this works with DaVinci Resolve. I'm really excited for that. And I think that uh, hopefully um, it exceeds my expectations because otherwise spending all the money on this isn't gonna be worth it. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, I put my money where my mouth is. None of this is sponsored. This is 100% all on me. Um, so I wanna see if this actually works um, better than the current system I have, which is four years old. It's an old uh, 7980XE um, with OC'd out to uh, 4.4 gigahertz and uh, only 128 gigs of RAM. And um, I was using an RTX 3090, which really helped boost the performance inside of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, but I also know that it's only a PCIe 3, so we may not be getting the full performance there. Um, so I'm really excited to try this, but with two, Looking at some of the tests that others have done with dual uh, and three cards um, with the RTX 3090, it's been pretty impressive results. So hopefully this helps out with a lot of my workflow because a lot of what I do um, revolves around, around high resolution content, whether that's for time lapse or live action. So I really want to be able to have a editor that really just chomps through that footage without having to have any kind of uh, playback or stuttering because nobody likes playback or uh, stuttered playback. It's, it's stupid, stupid. Um, so I'm also gonna be using the, uh, the new Asus, Asus uh, Pro Workstation WRX80E. You say that five times fast. There's so many numbers and letters, I don't even care. Um, but really excited because this has dual 10 Gbit um, ethernet, which is fantastic. 
um, and a ton of uh, PCIe lanes as well as M.2 um, spots for all of our uh, storage, which is fantastic. Now to power this, um, originally I was going to go with a 1200 uh, watt power supply unit, uh, but then after doing some research I found out that if um, these ever surpass the 480 watts that you'll probably blow the, the circuit. So I ended up having to get a um, 1600 platinum um, EVGA, which originally only cost uh, $399, but with all of the fun Bitcoin mining that's going on, um, it topped out just under um, $999. So it's about a 200% uh, markup in price. So that's one of the things with everything that's going on in today's world, all of these components are marked up considerably, um, anywhere between 50 to 100 to 200 to even 400%, um, which makes this build a little silly because I think I could have purchased all of this if it was actually at, actually at MSRP um, for under 10,000. But with what the day today's climate is, with the Bitcoin miners and everything, um, this is just over um, $10,000 um, worth of uh, material. So I'm gonna put this together, see how it works out, and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's better than the current system I have, uh, but ultimately um, this is gonna be for DaVinci Resolve and After Effects and some 3D program rendering. So uh, really excited to test it out. Let's start building. We should have plenty of airflow. Um, all of these on this side um, are drawing the air in and two out of the four at the top are going to expel as well as our rear exhaust. So we're gonna create this really nice flow where it comes in, sweeps across the motherboard, the GPU and everything else and then gets expelled out this way. Um, so it's pretty awesome. One of the really weird things about this case is even though this is an, X, an ATXE um, chassis, uh, the ports um, on the right hand side are actually blocked by the motherboard itself. Um, so I really have no way to cable manage um, these cables without actually just coming up from the top and putting them in right here. So that's kind of kind of give our build um, an ugly look. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about this, but um, you going to have to figure it out. So I've got all of my power connectors connected uh, finally, but I'm just absolutely disgusted by uh, the cable management over here. I'm going to have to do something with this, um, probably zip tie everything off together um, just to create a nice little tight package because the unfortunate side, because this motherboard is just so big and even though this is an ATXE case, um, there's no places on the right hand side here that I can uh, use any kind of a cable management to like route the cables through to the other side. So I'm going to be left with this unsightly um, cable, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call this, braided a cable. Um, and I'm not really too excited about that. I want to make sure that it's not impeding any of the, the airflow that's coming through here. So I'm going to try my best to push this like right up against the, uh, the side of the, uh, the chassis wall. Um, but that being said, once I put the two 3090s in here as well, this whole area is going to be just engulfed with <laughs> freaking hardware um, and even more uh, you know, wires here uh, for power. So um, I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and realize that this isn't gonna be an ultra clean build. Um, I'd love to see that where this all these wires are hidden behind this other panel right over here, um, but I just don't think it's gonna be possible uh, with this motherboard and uh, with the amount of power that this thing needs. Um, I mean, we are using a 1600 watt um, PSU and the amount of power connectors you need just to power the motherboard is insane. It's more than I've ever seen for any other board that I've ever put together. Um, so this is turning out to be quite an interesting build. Um, I mean, again, I haven't done an, uh, an AMD build in a very long time, so I'm kind of excited but terrified at the same time. I'm going to put the CPU in next um, along with the RAM, uh, and then hopefully everything goes smoothly with that. And then once I do that, I just have to connect these bad boys, and then we'll get the computer up and running. Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and 
uh, processor in next. This is the Threadripper Pro 3975, which gives us 32 cores at uh, 4.2 at the boost, which is pretty freaking awesome. So that this is gonna go straight into here. Let's do it. Um, the only thing I need to do now is just attach the two GPUs, so I'm going to be putting in the 3090s um, right here, and then I've got two um, PCIe 4.0 um, M.2 um, RAID cards that are going to go down here, probably down here, um, because each card takes up two slots, so it's going to have to go down here. But yeah, we're almost there. Probably about 80% uh, of the way done. So the last thing we gotta do is put it in our dual 3090 cards. I'm just gonna start off with one 3090 just to make sure it boots. And then once it boots and we get proper everything, um, I'm gonna go through and add the second card. So uh, for right now, I'm just gonna add the one RTX 3090 and then I'll add the second one uh, once it boots. <laughs> Together. I've got the power supply hooked up, I've got the uh, graphics cards hooked in, I've got USB mouse and keyboard ready to rock and roll. Now we just gotta make sure that this thing posts. So uh, hopefully when we press the start button, everything's gonna come together and work. Otherwise, if it doesn't, I'm gonna be sitting here for a couple more hours trying to figure out exactly what I did wrong. All fans are going, RGB is up, really great airflow coming through here. Everything's being expelled properly. Now we just gotta wait and hope that it posts over here on this monitor. Here we go. <laughs> the BIOS posted. So after some back and forth, I was able to get the system to boot and go into post uh, inside the BIOS here and uh, everything was working fine. Um, one of the memory modules that I have of the 256 gigs of RAM um, apparently is bad and I'm gonna have to go back and try to figure out which one it is. Uh, but right now I'm just using it with 32 gigs of RAM, uh, but I'm going to go back and systematically add one more stick every time for boot just to see if it works. Um, otherwise, this is going to be uh, just a pain in the ass putting all this stuff together, so i got to figure out exactly which memory stick it is. But um, the good news is, is that it's reading everything. It can see that we know we've got the new AMD Ryzen uh, Fred River Pro 3975 at 32 cores. Um, the base clock core is 3.5 gigahertz. And, uh, you know, we got our one stick of memory in there, but hopefully we'll change that to 256 here shortly. Uh, I might have to contact the vendor to see what they're doing. Um, the speed of the memory is wrong, but I just need to implement some XMP 2.0 data, and that should fix it. Um, otherwise, this thing is ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to go ahead and load Windows and then try to add on the other GPU card as well as figure out which memory module isn't working. But otherwise, really excited. <laughs> Can't wait to test this out. All right, so I've gone ahead and added in the uh, the second RTX 3090. Um, I'm a little disappointed, though, because it takes up four slots um, of the eight that I have available. It only leaves me one PCIe um, 4.0 down at the bottom here, which I'm going to use for my uh, M.2 SSDs. Um, but at the same time, it's going to basically not allow me to add another one of those RAID cards. So I'm kind of disappointed in that sense. Um, so hopefully the uh, the performance that comes from the 3090 will make up for the the lack of storage that I can actually add to the unit. Um, it's pretty easy to put together. Um, I think I've got two or three um, 
bad memory modules though. I can only get 160 gigabytes of RAM to actually post and it comes up with errors when I add the extra. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably RMA that and then send it back and see what happens. But um, now I'm just gonna go ahead and test to make sure that these 3090s um, can sync up using the uh, NVLink right here. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Alright, the computer posted no problem. Both GPUs recognized and in use, and uh, Windows 10 Pro booted up like a champ. Now to get inside and uh, see how this actually works inside of DaVinci Resolve, so I'm going to give that a test next. Alright, so this is day two putting together the computer. Um, kind of ran into a few issues, um, not with anything too critical, but with the memory, which I guess is sort of critical. Um, but what's really weird though is if you look on the motherboard or the, uh, the board here, the, uh, the F slot up here, which is right in between the top two ones, um, is dead. So I have no ability to actually utilize that memory slot. So if I want to have all 256 gigs of RAM using the computer, I'm going to have to take out all of the stuff, take out all the CPU, uh, memory, GPUs, um, and then replace the motherboard because the motherboard is pretty much faulty, which is really unfortunate because it's such a pain in the ass to put together. So... Um, Given how much I've invested in the system, I'm going to have to RMA the board, send it back, and uh, wait for a new one. So I'm kind of disappointed. So I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, and then hopefully, uh, in the blink of an eye, it'll be back and uh, we'll have a new system up and running shortly. But uh, so far, the system tests have been outstanding. Um, really, really impressed with how fast the new uh, Threadripper is as well as having the uh, the dual GPUs, which I didn't think was going to be that big of a uh, an improvement, but for DaVinci Resolve, it's absolutely insane. So I'll let you know how the journey goes. So the chassis is all gutted again. Thankfully the wiring is still there. All I have to do is put the uh, motherboard back into its spot and then reattach all of the peripherals, CPU, heat sinks, GPUs. And then we'll be uh, back up and running again. Um, let's see what happens. All right, I'm back. Uh, I went to Micro Center, was able to replace the board. Um, it was really nice. Actually, the exchange happened really easily. So big thanks to uh, Micro Center. I uh, was able to get a board, new uh, thermal compound, and uh, yeah, good to go. So we're going to start the second build now. Here's the new board. We'll see uh, what happens this time. Hopefully the memory works. And then we'll get all of these components put back inside of the chassis. Yeah, let's just flip to a uh, time lapse and see what happens. <laughs> success we got a post here as you can see we uh, got the BIOS to boot 
which is fantastic. It sees all of our memory, actually gives us 262 uh, gigabytes of RAM, uh, and uh, our Threadripper Pro 3975, and everything else. Really excited. Um, now I can actually start getting to work. Everything posted, everything works. All systems nominal. The build is complete. I'm really excited to get this thing out the door. Um, it did have a, a few issues and complications while we were putting together. Obviously, the motherboard was the biggest issue. Uh, we had one of the RAM slots um, basically um, not show up in post, and it was also preventing the, uh, the computer from posting. So what I had to do is I actually went back to Micro Center, big thanks to them. Um, they were able to replace the motherboard that I had, and uh, I was able to get a new one within just a matter of minutes. Brought it back. Slammed in all of our, uh, our RAM as well as our CPU, GPUs, uh, and all of our uh, storage, and it works flawlessly. Um, I've only opened it once up inside of DaVinci Resolve because ultimately this is what this computer is going to be used for. It's just a workstation for all of my editing, color grading, as well as uh, image processing for time lapse and live action footage. So anywhere between 8K, 12K, and beyond is what I'm really aiming for. In my initial test with DaVinci Resolve, I was really blown away by just how beautiful the performance was uh, playing back 8K red helium footage. Um, I layered on about four different uh, VFX and color layers inside of the, uh, the color panel. Uh, and as you can see, I was able to play it back beautifully at its native 24 frames per second um, at the 8K resolution. Uh, you know, I was also able to go back onto the timeline itself, uh, duplicate that layer three times. That's three 8K layers. Um, and it all played back um, concurrently at uh, its, its true real-time playback at 24 frames per second. So it just shows you how impressive having dual 3090s are when you're using it um, in tandem with high-resolution footage. So really, uh, really stoked to see what happens in the future, especially when I go into higher resolutions like the 12K or even 16K footage, because hopefully um, it'll play that back without any issues. Um, I'm going to do some more tests and more studies with this though, uh, but as, I can, as far as I can see now, the Threadripper is probably one of the best systems I've ever used. Um, and the, with the amount of memory and GPU that's in this, I'm going to be doing a lot of fun stuff. Now, I will test some gaming as well because, you know, I like to dabble in a little Warzone here and there, as well as Valheim and some of the other games. Uh, but for the most part, this is going to be a workstation work computer. But really excited. The build was fun. Um, even the second time around, it went so much faster. It only took about 35 minutes in total uh, to put it together. And um, honestly, it was, it was a pretty easy thing to do. So um, if I do another AMD build, I'll probably go with Threadripper as well. And we'll see what happens. But if you guys like what you saw, uh, please like, subscribe. And as always, happy shooting. Take it easy, everyone. Thanks for joining me.